Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome back to this edition of the Brazilian Algebraic Geometry Seminar. It's a pleasure to have my good friend, Emilio Franco from the Instituto Técnico Superior de Lisboa. And he's gonna talk about deformation theory of orthogonal and symplectic sheets. Emilio, please go ahead. Well, first of all, uh, thanks, uh, thanks to the organizer for inviting me to speak uh, here at this uh, Bragg seminar or Fick and Castle seminar. And, uh, and I would like to, to say hi to all, all the friends that I, I'm just seeing <laughs> their names. But, um, well, uh, I spent a great time in Brazil and uh, I miss you all so much. So. <laughs> and, um, and yeah, today I'm going to speak about the um, deformation theory, the uh, deformation and obstruction theory of, uh, of symplectic and orthogonal sheets. And um, I will start by, by recalling the very basic definitions of uh, the deformation theory of uh, orthogonal, uh, well, principal bundles in general. So if we have a predictive variety, um, if we have a complex reductive Lie group, and in, in this talk, I will be thinking about uh, GLMC, OMC, and SP2MC. So the general linear group, the orthogonal group, and the symplectic group. If we have um, a G bundle, um, E over X, well, this G bundle is given by, by the associated trans transition functions. And we have a clear notion or an intuitive notion of what is a, a first order deformation of this uh, G bundle. Um, and it goes as follows. Uh, so if we modify slightly uh, these uh, transition functions by some elements uh, in, well, in, in, the, in the tangent space of the, of the, of the group, so the Lie algebra, we are able to construct um, um, another uh, G bundle, which is uh, very close uh, to this original G bundle. And, um, and we can see that if we ask uh, the new transition functions to respect uh, the cycle time condition, we will be asking to this new uh, piece uh, that we are uh, adding to our transition functions to satisfy the one cycle condition for, for the adjoint bundle. So in this sense, we can say that uh, the H1 of uh, EG, uh, so the, the adjoint bundle, the H1 of the adjoint bundle classifies the, the first order deformations of our principal bundle. Um, in, in the case of, uh, of GLNC, the, we see that the uh, principal bundles are as uh, are given are completely determined by by uh, the vector bundles, and in this case uh, the adjoint bundle is uh, nothing more than the endomorphism bundle of this associated to this vector bundle. So in this case, the deformation of vector bundles is given by by the H one of of this vector bundle uh, of this endomorphism bundle of the vector bundle. In the case of the orthogonal group. Um, we have that uh, the, the, an, an orthogonal bundle is, is going to be given by, by a pair of a vector bundle plus a reduction structure group from, from GLNC to ONC. And this is equivalent to, uh, to, to give a, a, um, a quadratic uh, symmetric form on, on the vector bundle. So in this case, we have a quadratic form, which is symmetric. And um, being symmetric means that uh, if I permute uh, the entry, the entrance of this quadratic form, uh, I get the same quadratic form. So in this case, the adjoint bundle is given by, by the kernel, by, by, by those endomorphisms, so by a sub-bundle of the endomorphism bundle, that uh, anti-commutes with this uh, quadratic form. And, 
we can express that in terms of, uh, of the kernel of, of a map. If I uh, start with an endomorphism, I, um, I compose this endomorphism with the quadratic and I add it, uh, I symmetrize it, this composition. Um, then uh, we see that uh, the adjunct bundle is precisely the kernel of this uh, morphism. In this case, we see that uh, the formations of uh, orthogonal bundles are given by the H1 of, of this subbundle, which is given by this kernel of this morphism. And the same story uh, goes uh, in, for, for the symplectic case. In this case, um, uh, we will ask uh, the, the reduction from GLMC to, SP to MC would be a quadratic form, which would be anti-symmetric under uh, permutation of the entrance of this quadratic form. And, um, and uh, the adjoint bundle is given by those uh, um, those endomorphism bundles that are symmetric under uh, composition with this uh, quadratic form. So we can express uh, this, this adjoint bundle as, as a bundle of the endomorphism bundle, uh, which is determined by, by the kernel of, of, of a map, which, uh, which here in terms, in, instead of uh, symmetrizing, we are anti-symmetrizing. So, um, so in this case, uh, we have that uh, information of symplectic bundles are given by, by this kernel with this minus here. So the, the importance of um, deformation theory, um, well, deformation theory is often used to, to study uh, local structures of, uh, of moduli spaces. We, we often uh, use this um, well, um, moduli spaces are, are spaces that uh, classify certain geometric objects. For instance, um, one can consider the moduli space of, of G bundles, and uh, well, it's, um, it co represents a certain factor. Um, the factor that it co represents is uh, the factor that uh, associates uh, to each um, a scheme. The set of families over this uh, scheme, and uh, of course we have to introduce some certain uh, stability notions, and uh, and uh, we find that uh, in certain cases um, the moduli spaces for uh, for this geometric object exist, as is the case of the of the case of uh, G bundles over any projective scheme. Uh, these moduli spaces are. Are, are, have been um, widely studied in the case of curves, for example, uh, it was uh, the moduli space of G bundles for a curve was constructed by Ramanathan. And uh, it was proven uh, by him that uh, it's a compact um, variety in this case. Um, but it is not in general, uh, when the base uh, manifold is uh, is of dimension higher than one, so in this case uh, we have to find uh, some compactification if we still want to uh, to, under to work with uh, with a compact or even projective variety. And uh, for example, uh, in the case of uh, um, if in the case of GLC, if we study the moduli space of vector bundles, uh, one, one thing that we can do uh, in order to find this uh, compactification in, in higher dimension, in, in dimension higher than one, is to study the moduli space of torsion-free sheaves uh, over, the, um, over the base variety. And uh, we can understand these uh, torsion-free sheaves as mild generations of, of vector bundles. And uh, in fact, uh, this moduli space uh, exists. And it was proved by Gisker, Marujama, and Simpson that uh, it exists and, and it's in, indeed a compactification of the moduli space of vector bundles. So if we want to do uh, the same thing in, in the case of uh, um, principal bundles, we have to consider. Uh, 
the so-called principal C or, or singular uh, principal bundles. Um, so, in the same way as uh, torsion free sheaves are mild degenerations of vector bundles, principal sheaves are going to be mild degenerations of, of G bundles. And the um, definition is as follows it's a, it's a triple given by, by a, a certain principal bundle, a torsion free sheaf, and a certain isomorphism. So, F uh, is a triple PF beta where F is a torsion-free sheet, P is a principal bundle, which is, um, oh, yeah. Um, and over the, um, it's a principal bundle, which is defined only over the space, uh, over the locus, where, where this guy is a torsion-free sheet. And then beta is an isomorphism between this vector bundle, which is defined over this, uh, of free locus with uh, of the adjoint bundle of this guy uh, it's isomorphic or to f over this adjoint uh, over this uh, torsion free locus um, in the case of symplectic and orthogonal bundles we can give a, a, a much simpler definition and then instead of working with the with the adjoint bundle we can work directly with the principal uh, with a, a standard representation. So, uh, for us, uh, an orthogonal or symplectic sheet is going to be the pair given by uh, a torsion-free sheet and a quadratic form uh, defined for this torsion-free sheet, which is symmetric in the case of orthogonal uh, sheets and uh, anti-symmetric in the case of uh, symplectic sheets. And uh, we will ask uh, that uh, this quadratic form is non-degenerate uh, over the torsion free locus. So over the locus where, where this sheaf is, sorry, locally free locus. So over the locus where this, uh, this torsion free sheaf is actually uh, locally free. And uh, it was proven by, by Gomez, uh, Tomas Gomez and Matthew Sol that uh, the moduli space of principal sheaves exists, and it is in, in fact uh, a compactification of, uh, of the moduli space of uh, principal bundles. And uh, I would like to well, I would like to thank uh, Thomas Gomez because uh, he introduced me to this problem, and uh, he he helped me a lot uh, through through this project. And uh, well, um, at the core of the proof of the construction of uh, Gomez and Sol, it's, uh, it's the idea of extending Ramanathan's stability notion to, to higher dimension, to dimension higher than one. And uh, for example, in, in the case of orthogonal and uh, symplectic sheaves, uh, one has uh, the stability notions it's basically uh, the, notion, the stability notion for torsion free sheet, but uh, checking that the uh, inequalities only uh, for isotropic subsheets, which is a very um, natural notion. It's a, it's a very natural notion for, for well, it's basically a direct translation of the stability notion for orthogonal and synthetic bundles. And uh, here it comes uh, my motivation to, to, to study this project because um, uh, I would like to, to, to have a, a local description of, of the moduli space of uh, principal sheaves um, precisely at, uh, at the locus where it is not uh, a principal bundle. Uh, and uh, I want to have this. Uh, very uh, explicit description in order to, to check if uh, certain properties of the moduli space of uh, principal bundle extend to, to the moduli space of principal sheaves. So if, if this extends the compactification and uh, try to see after well if uh, one can disingularize these spaces on, on, the, on this, um, uh, on this uh, non-locally free locus. 
style. I need a, a local description of these moduli spaces and, uh, and uh, we will achieve that uh, by, uh, by um, well, um, using um, deformation theory is the way of uh, achieving this uh, local description. So I will uh, briefly introduce the, the notions that appear in deformation theory. And um, I will, um, will denote by, well, um, we, we will first consider a complete local algebras with a residual field uh, K or, or, or standard field. So I will have, uh, well, they, these algebras are in fact uh, local, so they have a unique uh, maximal ideal. And, um, and inside this, I will consider those algebras uh, that are finite dimensional, so arcing algebras. And know that uh, these are basically, uh, is the dual category of, uh, of fat points. So a fat point would be the spectrum of uh, of A, where A is in in the category is is an algebra algebra, and uh, for example, one can consider the spectrum of of the algebra of dual numbers, so k x quotient by x square, and um, and and yeah. So inside this uh, category of uh, arting algebras, I will say that uh, um, the, um, the extension of, of an arting algebra B by A is small if, um, if they satisfy that um, uh, the kernel of this extension um, is annihilated by the maximal ideal of, uh, of the of, of the algebra A. And that means that we are increasing uh, our, our Artin algebra just by, by little steps. So in fact, um, we, can, we can decompose every extension of Artin algebras in fact in, into small extensions. So it's, um, it's a very appropriate notion because if we can check things for, for these small uh, extensions of Artin algebras, then we can, um, this will generalize to other extensions. So I would, um, I would say that uh, the formation factor, it's a, it's a factor from the category of Artin algebras, so the dual category of, uh, of uh, of fat points, so the opposite category of fat points uh, to the category of sets, such that uh, the the Artin algebra given by by the field itself by K is uh, it's sent to the singleton to to the set with just one element. I would say that uh, the space of first order deformations of this uh, deformation factor is just uh, the the, the factor applied to, to, to the algebra of dual numbers. Uh, or, or in other words, this is the, also it's called the tangent space of the deformation factor. And um, I can define uh, an obstruction theory by, um, by checking that uh, for each, um, well, by associating to, to each uh, small extension of Artin algebras, a map uh, in this, uh, well, a, a sort exact sequence in this way, where this is just um, the pullback um, by, by the inclusion of A into, a spec of A into a spec of B of, uh, of the, the objects classified here. And uh, associating to each uh, each small extension a map from uh, the deformations classified by A to a certain space uh, tensor by 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 these uh, 
by this kernel of the extension in such a way that uh, this uh, is an exact sequence on, on the right. So whenever um, this uh, an object is sent to zero under this obstruction morphism, uh, this obstruction maps, I can lift it to to the to the bigger uh, fat point. Okay. Also, I would say that uh, uh, the formation factor is representable if uh, there exists uh, a complete local algebra. So. Uh, um, an element here in in this uh, in this category of uh, complete local algebras, such that uh, there exists an isomorphism, an isomorphism with our with our deformation factor, and uh, I will say that uh, this isomorphism it's a uh, it's a universal uh, profamily. It's uh, it's not a family because we're considering um, R in a larger category. In a, in a prolongation of our category of Artin algebras. So we use the word uh, pro family in this case. In, if, um, if this morphism is it's formally smooth, so if, uh, if for every Artin algebra I get a surjective map from the homomorphisms or from R to A to, to the space. Uh, uh, classified by by A to to all the to all the deformations classified by A. Uh, if it is rejective, um, I would call this uh, this pro family versal, meaning that uh, I can always lift um, um, a deformation classified by A to amorphism from the fat point uh, 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 given by A, the spec of A, to the, to the, um, to the open subset uh, given by, by R, to the spec of, of R. And I would say that um, the, the profamily is, is universal if it is versal, and uh, if we get uh, a bijection uh, at the level of tangent spaces, or in other words, if we get a, a bijection for for the algebra of dual numbers for spec of x, uh, or spec of uh, k of x quotient by x squared. So it's uh, inversal, and uh, for the form, for first order deformations, it's bijective. So for every first order deformation comes from one and only one first order of the information of, uh, of or spec of R. So um, one of the first examples of uh, deformation theory of, uh, in, in geometry is the deformation theory of uh, coherency. This is very classical. And um, the deformation factor in this case is very close to to a moduli uh, a moduli factor. Uh, in this case, instead of classifying uh, just families parameterized by by fat points, I would classify pairs of families uh, classified by families of sheaves classified by fat points, plus an identification of or, uh, of the restriction of the family to the um, close up uh, to the unique close subset given by, by the maximal ideal with our starting uh, uh, coherency. And um, it was proven by, by Grothendieck that uh, the, the space of first order deformation of, uh, of the deformation factor of coherency is precisely the H1. Of, um, I mean, well, the, the x1 of e by itself, so extensions of e by, by itself. Uh, it was also proven by, that there exists a universal family, uh, a universal pro family for, for this factor. And uh, even, even more when, when e is simple, 
uh, when there are no more uh, anomorphism than just uh, uh, scalars, then uh, this factor is pro representable. So this universal family is indeed a universal family. And uh, we get uh, we can co also construct an obstruction theory, and the, the obstructions the, the vector space associated to this obstruction theory is x two of e by by x f. So note that um, this is the h one of this uh, complex, uh, the, the home complex in the Dirac category, and this is the h two of this uh, home complex in, in the Dirac category. And uh, the idea is uh, it's, uh, it's very beautiful. So um, for example, for, for, for A, for, to prove that the tangent space of, uh, it's the, the space of uh, extensions uh, of E by itself. Um, so we, we have to see that, uh, well, we have to, um, to see that uh, we have to check that, well, we have to obtain that, um, uh, well, we have to obtain a, a, a bijection between extensions of E by itself with uh, families classify uh, families um, of sheaves over X uh, were parameterized by, by this, the spec of the, the algebra of dual numbers. So the, the fat point, the, the, the single fat point. And uh, if we start with, a, with an extension, if we, tensor, uh, uh, if we tensor this family, well, sorry. If we start with a family here, and if we tensor this family with, uh, with this sort exact sequence that we naturally obtain from uh, the, the algebra of two numbers, we obtain uh, an, extens uh, an extension over, over X uh, because here we have an isomorphism uh, of this family, which is the restriction precisely with the, uh, to, to the complex, to the close uh, subset. And this corresponds to, to E by, by construction. And we have the same thing here. Um, so we have this identification between extensions of E by itself and the first order deformations of a coherency to prove uh, the existence of a universal family. One can um, make use of a theorem uh, given by Schlesinger that uh, he gave some uh, conditions that uh, one can check uh, in uh, in the relation uh, with this uh, or factor with, uh, with certain um, small extensions, um, particular small extensions with uh, certain properties. And, and also uh, one can construct an obstruction theory. The proof of this obstruction theory is uh, given by one obstruction theory that one can construct for the quote scheme and that induce uh, uh, an obstruction theory for 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 the for for coherences, one can forget about the the quote scheme structures of the morphism, uh, the the surjection from a fixed uh, sheaf, and uh, we will, that will give us an obstruction theory for for coherences. And um, so, if we want to, um, to construct uh, an a deformation theory for uh, symplectic. Uh, and orthogonal sheaves, we have to we have to do um, some passage to to the derived category as we have seen here. That because uh, it's very likely that uh, we're going to get something similar as in the case of coherent sheaves. And uh, in fact, this passage to to the derived category is, is very natural in the case of um, symplectic and orthogonal sheaves. Because in the case of sheaves, uh, we have that uh, taking uh, the dual sheaf is not uh, is not an involution in the category of coherent sheaves. Uh, so E double check is not uh, E in general, unless of course uh, the sheaf uh, that we start with is reflexive. But 
this is not uh, um, this is not the case of a general uh, orthogonal or symplectic band uh, shift. But if instead, if we go to the derived category, if we take the derived dual, uh, which is well, of course, uh, homomorphisms from our starting shift to um, to the structure shift, but homomorphism taking understood the homomorphism in the derived category. Well, this the derived dual it's uh, it's an evolution of the derived category. So in this case, we have that the, the double derived uh, is is a uh, is, um, is the identity in the derived category. So if we start with um, if we start with a quadratic form on a on a torsion free C, um, since the category of uh, coherence is full inside the derived category, we can consider uh, the morphism from uh, E tensor E uh, to the structure shift in the derived category. And this gives us, uh, by adjunction, a morphism from the uh, torsion free shift to the derived dual. And uh, so I can use. Uh, this presentation of the quadratic form instead of, uh, of this. And of course, uh, we have said that um, an orthogonal shift is when the, uh, the quadratic form is symmetric with respect of permutation of the entrance. And, uh, and, and it's symplectic when it's anti-symmetric under this permutation. And in this case, uh, this translates uh, into, into into seeing that um, this uh, this homomorphism is uh, um, respected by by taking the derived dual, and it's inverted if we take the derived dual. So if we construct, uh, well, if we recall that uh, the first order deformations of symplectic and orthogonal bundles were was given by by the H one of of a certain bundle, which is given by the kernel of this morphism that we have seen at the beginning, that we have seen here. So this uh, symmetrizing by the quadratic form. And uh, here in the symplectic case, we, we have anti symmetrize and then we take the kernel. Well, one can do the same thing in, in the case, uh, in this derived context, in, and in this case, um, we can construct this analogous morphism inside the derived category, sending uh, beta uh, in the case of orthogonal bundles, uh, symmetrizing beta with the with this uh, phi, and uh, in the symplectic context, uh, anti-symmetrizing beta, uh, where beta is an, is a, an, an endomorphism of uh, the sheath uh, in the derived category. And uh, one can take uh, the, the mapping cone of this guy, of this morphism, and uh, one can shift it to, to the left by one, one spot. And in fact, um, this gives us a distinguished triangle, triangle uh, of the form uh, uh, given by this, uh, this complex that I will call the deformation complex associated to the symplectic or uh, orthogonal shift. So I will call this complex uh, theta, big theta. Um, and this gives us a distinguished triangle. And uh, taking the cohomology, we get a longer stack sequence. And I, I would like to say that uh, um, a similar complex was considered by Jacopo Scalisi, a PhD student by, by Hugo Bruzzo in his thesis, uh, where he was studying um, Frame uh, uh, symplectic shifts, and uh, he well, he, he considered this uh, this complex um, uh, in the case of quadratic shifts. So, and then he proved uh, he has some uh, results in, in this direction, but uh, he never uh, he never produced a deformation theory or structure theory for for these uh, symplectic and orthogonal bundles. And uh, of course, note. That uh, if we we start if our uh, 
orthogonal and symplectic sheath is, is, uh, has uh, an underlying sheath which is locally free. In this case, uh, this deformation complex is supported on, on degree, on just one degree, on degree zero, and uh, it amounts to the kernel of the map that we have considered at the beginning. Okay, so in this case, uh, we sort of recover uh, the original uh, bundle that we have uh, considered in the case of bundles. So um, once we have uh, defined our uh, deformation complex, we can study certain properties. In fact, we can study the, the its cohomology, and uh, one can see that the the zero cohomology of this complex it's uh, is given by homomorphisms of the of our uh, well sorry. Uh, yeah, it's given by the homomorphisms of the underlying uh, sheaf, which uh, uh, which are symmetrized uh, with the with respect of the quadratic form, and uh, we can see that this amounts to the Lie algebra of the automorphism group of for starting orthogonal or or symplectic sheaf. Also, we can we can study uh, the the H one of this complex, and um, we will see that it classifies extensions of uh, of the um, of the sheaf by itself, together with a map uh, from um, um, to begin with sort of a quadratic uh, form. Uh, is not a quadratic form on 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 F, uh, the middle term in this uh, sort of in, in this extension, uh, but is uh, is sort of a, a quadratic form. Uh, it's just a map uh, coursing by some subspace, and um, and if we start with a quadratic, uh, if we start with a, or an orthogonal sheaf, uh, we get that this this map is is symmetric. And uh, in the case of symplectic sheaves, it's anti-symmetric. And, uh, and the H2 of this complex, it classifies pairs uh, of uh, two extensions of, uh, of this sheaf E by itself, together with a class of maps uh, from uh, the tensor product of G of the second term in the extension with the first term in the extension to, to the trivial sheet. And, uh, and we can also identify uh, the zero element uh, in this uh, H2 with those extensions that uh, split and such that um, it, we get uh, uh, the, this, uh, this, these maps here vanish on, on, on this complement of, of this splitting. So the restriction, uh, if, if the sequence is split, then we get that uh, uh, the, the first term of the extension decomposes into a direct sum of E by H. And, um, and uh, if, if this guy is zero, then it's associated to a morphism that vanish on, on the restriction to H to H tensor G. And this gives uh, naturally uh, an element in the H1 of, uh, of this complex. Um, and well, um, if we, now if we define our deformation factor, uh, it's uh, a natural generalization of uh, the the formation factor uh, of a coherent sheaf. Um, it will, in the case of coherent sheaf, remember that uh, we were classifying uh, families of coherent sheaves plus some identification uh, of the restriction uh, to the close point, uh, well, to the close subset of, uh, yeah, families parameterized by, by path points. 
uh, together with an identification uh, with the restriction of this family to the closed subset of the fat point with the starting C. In this case, what we're going to classify is families uh, parameterized by fat point, but families of uh, orthogonal or symplectic shifts. So we're going to classify triples of uh, families of uh, coherent shift and uh, an quadratic form. Uh, and again, we're going to take this identification of the shift uh, restricted to the close point and also an identification of this quadratic form of the family with the quadratic form of our, start, uh, our starting uh, orthogonal or symplectic sheet. And, uh, and in fact, one can prove an analogous theorem uh, to, to that of the case of coherent sheets. Um, but uh, substituting uh, the, the complex, the, the, the complex that we have used uh, in the case of coherency was this home of E to itself in the drive category. In this case, we're going to substitute that with our deformation complex of the uh, of our orthogonal or symplectic sheet. And, um, and so uh, the tangent space of, uh, of our deformation uh, a factor or the first order, the, uh, the space of first order deformation coincides with the H1 of our deformation complex. We can also prove that there exists a universal for family for this deformation complex, uh, this deformation factor. Also, when the orthogonal or symplectic sieve is simple, this deformation factor is uh, this deformation, uh, this universal family. Is indeed uh, universal, so the factor in this case is pro-representable, and uh, and in fact we can also construct an obstruction theory for for these guys, uh, and uh, this obstruction theory is modeled on on the second cohomology of this uh, this deformation complex. And uh, the idea of the proof is uh, quite uh, similar to um, to the proof of of this analogous theory in the case of of uh, coherent sheets. So to see that uh, the the first order deformation is indeed the um, the H one of this uh, deformation complex. We go to this uh, identification, and um, and well, we perform this the very same identification. Um, oops, sorry. Yeah, we perform the same identification between extensions and families, plus this uh, this extra quadratic form that we have defined in the family. Will give us uh, a quadratic form on 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 the family on on the family e. So using this uh, this psi, we're able to construct this this quadratic form on the family. Uh, so this will, that will tell us that uh, the first order of deformation is this H one. We can see that this a finite uh, dimensional space. So uh, at least one of the Schlesinger condition, uh, we have already proved one of the uh, Schlesinger conditions. We can check that uh, this factor if indeed satisfy, uh, satisfies the other Schlesinger's condition. And, um, and that gives us using the Schlesinger theorem that uh, provides uh, the existence of a universal family associated to this factor. In the case of, uh, of a simple orthogonal symplectic sieve, we can prove an extra uh, condition. So the, the condition that provides uh, a universal family or presentability. So in this case, we also get that uh, the factor is representable. And uh, the construction of the obstruction theory it's uh, really 
quite uh, quite complicated. Let me let me avoid uh, um, to give you um, a hint of this in, in this case because it's uh, really very very technical and uh, only the construction of the morphisms that uh, that you need uh, to construct from uh, the deformation. I mean the, the deformations classified by A to to this space was already quite hard. Um, but uh, basically, uh, we help it. Uh, we, we, we basically um, use the existence of an obstruction theory in the case of, uh, of sheaves. And uh, we managed to extend this uh, to, to this other, well, I mean, to the other extra structure that, uh, that, takes, uh, that makes part of the symplectic and, and uh, orthogonal sheaves. And um, and yeah, so let me. So th this is the main theorem of uh, of my of, of this paper of this project. And um, let me finish by by saying that uh, every every deformation problem um, has uh, well. For starting with a deformation problem, one can uh, associate a, a deformation factor. But uh, in many cases, uh, there exists a differential graded Lie algebra associated to this deformation project problem, and uh, in and this uh, uh, naturally give us using the more cartan equations this, uh, this this give us the construction of the deformation factor. In, in the case of cohesion sheets, this uh, differential uh, differential graded graded Lie algebra is uh, is of course uh, this home of E to E in the derived category, um, and of course uh, the Lie bracket uh, that one can uh, construct over this uh, complex is uh, it goes as follows. So if we take a a locally free resolution. Um, this uh, endomorphism in the derived category is, uh, is given in uh, well in in the V zero is the the direct sum of all the homes of this uh, this uh, locally trivial uh, sheaves in degree minus one is uh, the homes. Um, from one um, from from one locally free sheet to the next locally free sheet, and in in degree one, it's uh, is the morphism from um, one to the previous one. So one can construct um, a differential uh, graded uh, Lie algebra structure by defining the following bracket for. For these guys, oh yeah, of course, um, homogeneous elements. So elements in one of these uh, degrees are given by by homomorphisms between uh, this uh, well, direct sum of uh, homomorphisms from from this space uh, from this space to, to the corresponding uh, uh, shifted uh, element in the in the locally free resolution. So, um, so one can construct the, the bracket by basically uh, by composing but what we can compose and then anti semi tracing. Okay, so if we have a homogeneous element uh, in degree i and a homogeneous element in degree j, uh, we send this to, to an element in. in a homogeneous element in degree i plus j by by composing what we can compose uh, from from these guys with uh, with uh, with these guys uh, with the guys uh, homogeneous elements in degree j and then anti-symmetrizing with the well up to um, plus or minus depending on the degree. And um, 
And this uh, differential Lie algebra structure on, on home E uh, give us naturally a differential uh, Lie algebra structure on, on our deformation complex. And the idea is that, uh, well, these guys are, uh, are elements of the mapping cone. So they, they are direct sum of elements in, in home E to E and the elements in this other complex, home E to DE. So the bracket goes as follows. We, um, we first uh, take the bracket being home E from the elements in, in the homogeneous element in degree I with the homogeneous element in degree J. And then uh, we antisymmetrize uh, the composition of this guy with this guy and uh, this guy with this guy, which can be composed. And again, we compose whenever we can compose. And um, so we get uh, that our deformation complex is not only a complex, but is a differential Lie algebra. And, uh, and then, well, it will allow us uh, to, to define the local structure of the Motley space by, by considering the, the bracket in, in this H1, as, as in the case of sheets. But um, yeah, so this is everything I wanted to, to, to talk about. And uh, thanks a lot for, for listening. Thank you, Emilio. Let's... Uh... Are there any questions? Yeah, uh, Emilio, did you work out any, uh, so you have a general theorem that you uh, presented about the construction of moduli spaces. Have you worked out uh, any examples? Um, you know, the um, moduli space for such variety is? Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm describing this in the case of um, elliptically fiber K3 surfaces. Um, um, but yeah, um, in fact, what I do is I translated using some Furumuka transform, I translated to basically a spectral data mm. of uh, ships equipped with some um, isomorphism with the well, I translate that into spectral data, and 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 yeah, in this case, um, uh, I have been working some some examples. Okay, and uh, is is this a naturally a sub variety or uh, of the moduli space of uh, all bundles or all sheaves? Is that true or? Well, I still don't know. Okay. <laughs> Let me wait a little bit. Uh, so in this case that I'm very interested, I still don't know if we get an, um, an embedding. Of course, we have mm. a, a map. We have a, a finite map. Because, uh, yeah, well, the definition of the stability definition uh, well, you're checking that only for isotropic sub subsheaves, so if you have something, uh, if you start with something which is uh, uh, semi-stable, uh, you get, well, you get a rational map. Mm -hmm. But um, I guess that one can prove in some cases, as uh, the one that I mentioned before, that uh, you can get a, a map to the multiple space. And in this case, uh, I still don't know if you, you get an embedding, but you get a finite map. Okay. Good, thank you. Are there more questions? Okay, well, so let's thank Emilio again. Hello. I'll stop recording. <laughs>